right, so uh, I'm Ethan Gruber from the American Numismatic Society. I'm going to be talking a bit about um, reconciliation APIs for OpenRefine. Uh, is, how many people here are familiar with OpenRefine? Anybody? Okay, so a few people. All right, so OpenRefine is a really powerful tool for cleaning data. It was originally developed by Google and then open sourced, and it is now community driven. So I'm going to be talking a bit about how I've um, created some APIs for cleaning data, specifically related to coin data, and uh, how I actually use the tools I've built to clean data, which is unusual because I almost never get to use the things that I build for other people. Uh, so one of the problems we have in numismatics, or basically any field uh, of archaeology at all, are um, standardization in names. So this is denarion, which is Greek for denarius, which is also denier in French and has labels in various other languages. Um, anybody who has worked on aggregating data from different databases produced by different countries will encounter problems uh, within um, terminology within those databases and how to reconcile that terminology to standard identifiers. Um, one of the problems, uh, this problem is being addressed by the Namisma.org project, which is a, an open, collaborative, international project to define the concepts of numismatics within linked open data um, technical methodologies. Um, I won't belabor the details of Namisma um, in great detail since we've published numerous papers about the project at CAA since 2012. Um, so following linked data principles, um, regardless of what the label is of a denarius, we all agree that it's the same concept, and that concept is represented by a URI. And when you go to that URI, uh, there's human readable information, but there's also machine readable information underlying this that other machine processes can use uh, in real time. And when you go to this page, um, there's some metadata on the left about you know, labels and how it matches uh, identifiers and other information systems like the Getty um, Art and Architecture Thesaurus or the British Museum Thesaurus. Uh, we've aggregated a lot of data into the system about um, th these types of coins and are able to show uh, maps showing the um, distribution of the, uh, the types, where they're produced and where they've been found. Um, and below there are some examples of uh, coin types that you can see, associated types in various projects. So um, in the MISMA, we've now I, um, created identifiers for at least 6,000 um, distinct concepts. They range from denominations, which are monetary values, materials, mints or production places, um, people and organizations responsible for issuing coins, so the rulers and magistrates and that sort of thing. So a coin type is basically a collection of all of these individual attributes. So this particular coin type um, is silver. Uh, it was uh, struck um, a specific manufacturing method. It was produced in Emerita, which was in Spain. Uh, it's a denarius. Uh, it was issued by the Emperor Augustus. And it says certain things on the front of the back of the coin and has specific iconography. You uh, put all of those distinct concepts together into a uh, distinct typology, and typologies are typically traditionally published in printed volumes. Um, they're thematically uh, organized, and this particular coin is published in something called Roman Imperial Coinage, which is a 10-volume masterwork of 50,000 typologies of coins produced by the Roman Empire over 500 years. And uh, in machine terms, all of these distinct concepts are also URIs defined in the MISMA, plus some other textual information about um, the inscriptions on the front and back of the coin. And following the numbering system established by Roman Imperial Coinage, we've uh, created URIs for it uh, within the online coins of the Roman Empire project, um, Ochre, which we first presented at uh, the Southampton Conference in 2012. 
this project has um, grown over the years since we uh, first presented it, and now we've aggregated more than 100,000 physical specimens from 30 different museum and archaeological databases. Um, turning our attention to Open Refine, we've, um, over the years, um, some of our partners contribute uh, linked data directly to us within our own uh, standard data models and ontologies. Uh, other partners don't really have the technical personnel to be able to do that. And so I've often received uh, CSV files from various museums which I've then had to write one-off uh, scripts in order to um, modify or um, transform that CSV data into link data and performed a lot of lookups um, within these scripts for Ochre to make sure that the reference in their own database matches to a URI in our system and, and it's, uh, it's very tedious, time-consuming stuff. And I decided that OpenRefine as a really powerful tool for cleaning data would really expedite this process dramatically. So open refine, um, and this example that I have is a data dump from the University of Graz collection. So um, you can arrange um, coins by facets uh, for data cleaning, which is, um, suppose you just want to see the emperors, uh, all the distinct values for emperor within the collection. Um, you can do data cleanup based on clustering, so it will find things that are the same word or similar words, but ha maybe have an extra white space in them, or end in a period when it shouldn't, or variations in capitalization, and you can standardize easily doing that. Uh, you can transform data with regular expressions, and Google has its own um, sort of scripting language for data transformations within OpenRefine. Um, it's uh, really powerful, but one of the most powerful things about it is the ability to reconcile uh, concepts within your, um, it, within your data to external uh, vocabulary systems. Uh, there are various APIs. Um, there's an API specification outlined by OpenRefine, and so there are APIs for normalizing place names to geonames and people to FIAF, the Virtual International Authority file, which is a major data set of people and organizations. Uh, Wikidata, which is a really, really powerful uh, information uh, set um, for identifiers for different concepts uh, based on Wikipedia. Um, and so I decided to start to build my own APIs within Namisma.org to be able to clean up these data um, without writing so many one-off scripts. So um, what I did, so in this example, I have the column that has uh, the emperors in it. So that's the authority column. And this data uh, are in German. So Constantinus I is Constantine, uh, as you might imagine. And um, so I want to normalize that column to Namisma. And so I select the column and I pull down a drop down menu and it says like reconcile or something like that. And then what it does, uh, the left side, it just performs a lookup on all of these names within, uh, the co uh, within that column in Namisma and then it gives you a, um, a percentage match. If there is one match that it finds, it will automatically match it. So there's only one match for Valentinian II. Uh, fortunately, this is all based on indexing of Namisma data, which includes uh, labels in um, sometimes hundreds of languages because we pulled them in from uh, Wikipedia. So it enables us to normalize even German labels, French labels, Arabic, whatever, to um, identifiers in Namisma. Uh, in other cases, uh, Severus Alexander maybe kind of has a text match with other, um, <coughs> other people uh, because it's keyword search that includes definitions and you can kind of hover your mouse over that name and it'll give you a little bit of a definition so you can just determine which Severus Alexander you actually mean. On the right side are um, 
denominations, so it works for basically any type of concept you need to normalize. Um, after doing that, I started building reconciliation APIs directly within Ochre and our other coin type projects. So we could begin normalizing references to uh, identifiers within Ochre. Um, the first thing to do with that in order to ensure the greatest accuracy is to first normalize other columns for denomination or mint or emperor to Namisma IDs and then standardize on the English label because the Ochre API is so far are based only on the English language index even though Ochre itself is available in something like 18 languages now. So after normalizing all the emperors to standardized English preferred labels from the MISMA, then we can begin uh, looking up um, these RIC numbers against Ochre. Um, and so it'll, it'll make uh, some exact matches. So it finds RIC 5 Aurelian 290 just based on the fact that you've already normalized Aurelian, the emperor, plus 290. So there's only one of those numbers. Um, if there are instances where it finds two possible matches, so uh, RIC volume 6 and volume 7 both have um, coins of Constantine and the numbering system resets from volume to volume. Um, so there are two possible matches for that. When you click on one of these names, it'll give you a little pop-up window, uh, which is the preview API within OpenRefine which uh, will pull information from Ochre as well as execute a Sparkle query, which is a query language for linked data in order to show an example uh, photograph of that coin if it's available. Uh, there's also an auto-suggest uh, API as well, so you can start typing in numbers and emperors and stuff and it'll hopefully find it in the system. Um, I won't get into too much detail about how this works, but as I said, o OpenRefine has its own standardized specification. So underneath of this, what OpenRefine does is it queries Namisma or Ochre with um, JSON um, and submits that to Ochre, which then transforms that query from OpenRefine into a Solar query. And Solar is a search index software that underlies all of our applications. And then the solar index response is in XML, and then that gets transformed back into JSON that OpenRefine renders in uh, a pop-up window or something like that. So that's all happening underneath. The Ochre queries are a little bit more complex because it involves also querying against emperor names or denominations or whatever. And uh, the preview API is basically it pulls um, data directly from Ochre and um, executes a Sparkle query, as I said before. Um, so that's pretty much all I have uh, for this presentation. So um, yeah, thanks. There's more information here, and the slides are online, and I'll, I'll share the, the link to them in case you want to take a look at any of these other uh, bits of information. But there are lots of tutorials out there for working with OpenRefine, so it's a really good tool. But thanks. Thank you.